All right, so just want to take a moment to uh, address the last video and let you guys know what happened to the three eggs that got away, seeing that I had a clutch of 24 and only hatched out 21 dragons. So I went to check on the uh, eggs in the incubator. Not like it's a lot of them, but the uh, snake eggs. And I noticed that this egg is molding. Now gray, as you can kind of see, he's still kind of gray. But he's a sweetheart, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I know you are. You're just a nice guy. What's going on, boys and girls? Got a lot happening in this video. But first, we're going to find out what these are hitting on. These are uh, eco-fresh insects, basically um, like uh, preserved grasshoppers. So we're gonna find out how the dragons respond to these. All right, so I figured it's only right we start with this guy. This is a hypo citrus genetic stripe het trans het wit blit male, and this is actually the father of that clutch of hypotrans GS's and uh, hypo GS's and hypotrans whiplets that I showed you guys in the earlier video. If you haven't seen that video, don't worry, I'll put a link for you in the uh, description. I'm gonna figure out how to start linking it at the top of the screen too, so you can just click it. But whatever the case, now I'll give you a little backstory on him. I purchased him from Carolina Classic Dragons, okay? So the missus loves Carolina Classics, well she used to. They used to be like one of her favorite breeders because she liked that bright yellow. She loved citrus. She loved citrus dragons. Okay. Um, now, when I initially purchased this guy in the pictures, he was very, very yellow. But when he arrived, not so much. He was almost stone gray, as you can kind of see. He's still kind of gray. But he's a sweetheart, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I know you are. You're just a nice guy. But whatever the case. Long story short. Needless to say, I was a little disappointed because he didn't have the color I was looking for. But I thought to myself, you know, he has a great temperament, as you can see. Uh, great anatomy. And he has a genetic stripe gene as well as a hypo gene. And, uh, you know, I make the most of it. I actually tried selling him at one point, but, uh, you know, no one jumped on it. He had massive size, which I thought, okay, you know what I'll do? I'll use him and outcross him into my whiplet line. At least worst case scenario, since I work with a lot of uh, citruses in my whiplet line, I can get some really good genetic offspring, uh, genetic carrying offspring, some really healthy, really big offspring with, you know, multiple genetics like the uh, genetic strike gene, the hypo gene, and I'll pair them to a female that I know is also het trans and het whiplet so we can prove them out for het trans. Now I had no thoughts of him being het whiplet, but sure enough, when I paired them last year, the babies hatched out whiplets. So needless to say, I no longer wanted to sell this guy or never even thought about it since then. And then this year we paired him again to another female uh, who was sold to me by Ron Biashino. I'll show you her shortly. And um, like I said, I'm very satisfied with this guy, but that's just an example of how the odds were working in my favor, right? Because I had no intentions of producing Whitblitz. I was only hoping to produce uh, possible Hetwits with this guy. And, and producing possible Hetwits the purpose of me doing that was, like I said, to strengthen up the line, outcrossing my whiplet line as far as possible. But I wasn't disappointed with getting some whiplets from a head to head pairing by finding out this guy was head whiplet. Made him even more valuable and actually made him quite a steal. So I paid around $400 for this guy. And like I said, I was a little disappointed about the color. But now, knowing he's had whiplet, the color makes a little more sense. And I know he comes from good citrus lines because he comes from Carolina Classic, which is mainly known for and specializes in citrus bearded dragons. Anyway, Let's see how he responds to our preserved grasshoppers. All right, so there we go. Those are our preserved grasshoppers. All right, see that? Hope you guys can see it. It looks like he's gonna take it. I think he will. Yeah, he did. All right, and if you don't own a pair of these, I suggest you get some. These are tongs. I'll put a link for you in the description so you can purchase some of your own if you don't already have them. But this is an essential tool for any bearded dragon owner. Can't say it enough. He really liked it. I mean, he crushed that. Let's give him one more. See if it. See if he likes it after he tried that first one. Let me show you these guys. What does this look like again? They're pretty big. That's a nice size on them. And they weren't expensive at all. Oh, yeah. He, he likes them.
good or what, man? What do you think? Does Mikey like it? Mikey likes it. You didn't eat the head yet. Get that. You just gonna leave that in there? What are you, an animal? Okay. Ah, uh, third time a charm. Let's just let's just stress check this right quick. All right. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's pretty fond of it. But like I said, this guy he, he eats pretty much any and everything I put in his, his tank. He'd eat me if I was small enough. Okay. So uh, whatever the case, yeah, it passes the test so far. And again, like I said, this is the father of the uh, Hypo Trans Whiplets and that uh, Citrus GS Clutch you just seen me post in the last video. I'll be making them available uh, in the very near future. So you guys keep your eyes peeled on the site. Link in the description for when those become available. And let's just test with a few more dragons. All right, so this handsome fella right here is a classic white. And why do I say a classic white, okay? Because now, when people say white, they aren't referring to white color morph bearded dragons. They're referring to zeros usually. But me, I am a bigger fan of white line bred dragons like this guy right here. And I call him a classic white because it's a classic sign of a white to have that yellowing. If you can see that yellowing around the eye and then an all white body. This is a hypo white male. He's also uh, head translucent. And he was sold to me by Amy Turnbull over at Upscale's Classic Dragons. What's up, Amy? Yeah, I love this guy. And Amy, she does a lot of work with the white lines, and and, me, and they all look really good. I, I I really like Amy's lines. I actually have some uh, actually be getting a, a white hypo head zero from her very soon. Um, so you know I'll do an unboxing video for you guys when I get that in. But yeah, this guy right here, and he has a pretty good appetite. He's a he's a great breeder. He's actually the father of the white tiger clutch that you've seen me post in one of the previous videos. Okay. And if you haven't seen those videos, guys, go definitely go back to the channel and uh, look at some of my previous videos. I think you'll enjoy them. But let's see if he responds the same way as uh, my guy up there did for this preserved cricket. All right, here's our preserved grasshopper again. Hope you guys can see that. They're pretty nice size, too. Yeah, you want it? You interested? Yeah, okay, so so far we're two for two, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, and they they really seem to like it. You know, it's funny because I actually used to feed them canned grasshoppers a long time ago, but that got kind of expensive as I started to get more dragons. But I definitely like offering them offering st them stuff like this as a treat. One thing that's really good to do with your dragons is to offer variety. I stress it in, in a lot of my videos. That's why you see me work with so many different species of roach, as well as other feeders. You know, I offer my dragons uh, roaches as a staple, superworms as a staple, and um, black soldier fly larvae as a staple. Those are three staple proteins that I alternate between, and I feel like, like I said, offering them that variety is very important. Not to mention, I also offer them Rapeshi, Beardy Buffet, um, Veggie Burger, and Grub Pie, because like I said, variety to me is key. No one wants to eat the same thing every day. I don't care if lasagna is your favorite dish. After having it seven days straight, you know what I mean? Week after week after week, you'll get tired of it. And dragons, if you if you if don't know already, dragons have a personality just like people. They are very, very charismatic animals. And just like people, they get tired of eating the same thing. All right? So just for enjoyment purposes, I mean, and health purposes, really, you know, a happy dragon is a healthy dragon, right? Or a healthy dragon is a happy dragon, however that goes. Whatever the case. Variety is key, ladies and gentlemen. But let's try it one more time. He ate that one pretty fast. Let's see how he responds to another. All right, so I just fed him those off the tongue. I'm gonna offer him from my hand and see if he wants it. Let's see. Oh yeah, he goes right to it. And I just wanted to t touch it so I can see like how it felt. Uh, it's a little moist, um, but they're not soft, like like uh, like squishy or anything. They aren't hard, like hard shelled or anything like that. But you know, just wanted to touch it, like I said, you know, get familiar with it. But I, I actually think I like these, and I actually think I'm going to uh, start carrying these in my online store. Link in the description. Ruthless with the plug. Okay, so he's 8-3. All right, so we're two for two so far. Let's give another dragon a test. Let's see who we got here. 
going on, man? So this is Logo. Okay. And yes, not all my dragons have names. Um, but some of them do. I kind of got past the point of naming dragons because I have so many. Um, but that's why I've been wanting to downsize my stable so I can just get back to that, like I said, personable experience with all my dragons and making sure that everybody's getting enough handling time and everybody's getting enough one-on-one -on -one attention. You know, it's, 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 it's one thing to have a lot of dragons and be able to feed them all and keep them clean, but I feel like there's so much more that goes into really producing healthy, happy pets for people as well as breeders for other, you know, breeders. You know what I mean? And I think temperament is one of those things. And I, I really feel like temperament can be passed down from dragons. That's why I don't really breed dragons that have bad temperaments. I will quickly rehome a dragon with a bad temperament. Of course, I let the person know that, you know, this dragon's a little feisty when rehoming it. You know what I mean? But I, I don't like breeding dragons with bad temperaments because I feel like they pass that down to their offspring, which can result in not only uh, mean dragons, but a lot of nips um, and... Uh, fights and it, it you know it can be hard to cohab them when you're trying to have your females together etc so forth and so on so just you know that's just my personal opinion is it is it true i'm not a scientist guys but uh, i have produced a lot of dragons in my lifetime and it seems to be true in my experience okay but anyway this is logo he is a translucent whip blitz okay not hypo trans as you can see his nails are black so he's not in hypo but he is a translucent Whitblit, and this guy is one of my favorites. Uh, if you don't know, let me tell you, our logo is base, is a is a gold dragon, and it's basically a uh, picture that I had of an actual hypo trans Whitblit that was gold uh, turned into the logo. Okay, so you know I like to consider us the home of the gold dragon, and uh, this is a prime example of what I mean. I'm actually going to be coming out with a uh, T-shirt of lo with logo on it pretty soon. I think you guys are going to like that as well as some other products. You know, I feel like I feel like bearded dragon clothing is just such an underserved uh, market. <laughs> I, I hear when I go to the reptile shows, I see the same bearded dragon shirts all the time. All right, so I try to keep a lot of interesting stuff in the store for you guys to check out. A lot of interesting merch and stuff like that for my real bearded dragon fanatics. It's definitely an obsession. If if you're if you're obsessed or understand what I mean when I say that bearded dragons are obsession, leave it in the comments. Let me know in the comments who who is who is obsessed with bearded dragons like I am. I want to know. Okay, I've owned a lot of reptiles and I own multiple reptiles, but there is no reptile I relate with more than the bearded dragon. So this beautiful fellow right here, look at the color on his head. Just look at this guy. I mean, he is he is all of it, right? And he's just been in breeding mode lately, so he isn't eating as much as I'd like him to because all he wants to do is just breed, 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 breed. Um, but let's just see if he takes it. Usually when I offer him stuff from hand, he goes right to me. All right, let's see if he wants it. Hey, Logo, you interested? Yeah. thing another reason why you want to spend time with the dragon so you can do things like this like hand feeding okay if you got a really aggressive dragon hand feeding them can can uh may not go as well as as you'd like it to what's up you want you want this piece you dropped here buddy yeah it's, it's the same thing you want it or, or not you're just gonna keep licking it or what's up okay yeah yeah Looking for some ladies. And I've actually got a lock with this guy. Uh, with two females. One of them being a hypo citrus gunner. I'll show you her in a second when I show you the mother of the uh, witness that we just hatched. Um, but what I'm looking to produce from him is basically some really strong head witness. I'm also going to be pairing him to a zero female. I'll show you her in one second. We're actually going to see if she wants some of these. He really likes it. He's like, I'm not leaving a piece. Don't worry, I got some more for you, brother. Relax, baby. 
But uh, yeah, I'm gonna um, show you her in one sec. I'm actually planning to breed him to her. She's a possible head trans, 100% head hypo. He's a trans head hypo. So what I'm hoping to produce optimally will be hypo trans het wearos, meaning head whip blit and het zero. Okay, 100% head whip blit and 100% head zero. But worst case scenario, I'll at least get uh, some 100% head whiplets, head zeros, head transits that are 66% possible uh, head hypo, and I also get some hypo triple heads. So hypo, head wero, head transits. Okay, and this is probably the wero project I'm working on. I have a wero, a leather wero, and I know you guys are probably getting confused, like whiplet zero wero. What, what, what are you talking about? Don't worry. Video coming soon. I'm gonna break it all down for you guys one more at a time. You know what I mean? Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that notification button so you don't miss that video when I release it, all right? Can't thank you guys enough for how much support you've been showing me. The channel has been growing quite rapidly, and I feel like I've been getting a little better at editing videos, you know? And I, I feel like I've been getting a little better at keeping it short. So this is a zero female right here, and she's a sweetheart. She can be a little feisty at times, but she's not mean, you know what I mean? She's she's really not a fan of the uh of the camera. But man, when I say she eats, she eats and she's growing fast. Okay? So zero Whitblit. Okay, when you combine these two visually, what you get is called Wiros, a Whitblit and Zero combined, okay? And like I said, I'll do a video telling you guys exactly how to produce wearows and how wearows are produced. You don't get them from just crossing a whiblet to a zero. You need to produce het wearows and pair those to other het wearows to ultimately produce wearows, okay? But yeah, look at this beauty right here. And I produced her as well as my boy Logo over here, okay? These are both both in-house productions, so I'm really looking forward to this pairing because this will be a complete, uh, this, this production will be completely from my own production. All right, so let's get this girl some grasshoppers, okay? See how she likes them. Now, I've been working with this girl a lot lately, uh, just taming her down. But let's see how she responds. See, her whole attitude changes when you put food in there. She's like, oh, 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 that what it is? Is that what you want? Is that what you were doing? I'm sorry. I'm your friend now. Hey, they really like these grasshoppers. And of course, I wouldn't offer these as a staple. I think that would definitely become expensive, especially when feeding a stable as large as mine's. But um, I would definitely offer these as a treat. I don't see it being expensive that way. You know what I mean? And they really like them, as you see. Yeah, yeah, you, you really like them. So you guys can look forward to seeing these in my online store in the near future. But uh, yeah, before we go, let me show you guys... The mother of the head whip blitz, I mean, of the whip blitz that we just produced, as well as the uh, hypo citrus dunner that I just paired with this guy and got a lot. So I went to check on the uh, eggs in the incubator. Not like it's a lot of them, but the uh, snake egg. And I noticed that this egg is molding. Now, what do you do when your eggs are molding? You definitely want to remove the molding egg. Okay, so that's what we're about to do. <laughs> All right, so we got that molded egg separated. Now, with the snake eggs, you gotta be careful because the snake eggs are connected, so when pulling them apart, you wanna be very slow and gentle. Next time, if I'm in the situation again and I have someone here to uh, film for me, I'll try to show you guys how I did it. But there we go, we gotta get that guy out of there. And what I also noticed is somehow crickets have managed to make their way into my incubator and jump in the water. And as you see that cricket back there molding, so we're gonna go ahead and empty this water and give it fresh water and then get these eggs back in the incubator. All right, fresh water. Clutch of snake eggs, and a clutch of dragon eggs, with the citruses. Um, I uh, bred this female to two different males, so I'm not sure who the dad is really. We'll find out when they hatch. That's a little trick that I, I use, but uh, if you can't just throw them with anybody, you gotta have 
indicators, things that when the babies hatch will let you know which parent, which uh, dragon the, is the parent. You know what I mean? You gotta have something that signifies, like for example, one dad might be a genetic striped dunner and the other dad might be leatherback. You know what I mean? So there are things that will hatch out that guarantee that this is one or the other. If both parents are the, if both fathers or both dragons are the exact same, both male dragons are exactly the same, then this could cause a lot of confusion when your eggs hatch out. All right, last but definitely not least, I have these two pretty ladies, okay? And these are both citrus females, okay? This first female right here, I produced this young lady. Uh, last year, 2018, as you can see, I'm sorry, I said 2018, at the end of 2017, and as you can see, she's developed quite nicely. She is a hypo citrus dunner, okay? She's also 100% het for trans. And they're right, baby. And baby. And baby. And baby. Her dad was a, a hypo trans dunner I used to have named SpongeBob. And if you look closely, you can see she has uh, her uh, neck is healing or peeling a little bit from breeding. It's, it's going through a shed that's like the healing process. It's not scarred or anything like that. You definitely don't want to breed your dragons until the point that their neck starts to get scarred or torn. Okay, so you definitely want to keep an eye on that when breeding dragons. But she is the female, one of the females that I have uh, recently crossed to Logo. Now, I've seen a successful lock, but I haven't seen her show any signs of being gravid yet, aside from eating a lot and gaining a little weight. Um, so, you know, hopefully she, she will become gravid and we'll get some eggs. Now, the second female, this curious little bird right here. What's going on, baby? You okay? Huh? Yes, yes, yes. It's just me. Okay, this girl right here was actually produced by Ron Biasino. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a breeder that I believe is located in Delaware. I see him sometimes at local uh, Maryland reptile shows. Great guy. Really easy to work with. Uh, very knowledgeable. Never had any complaints about Ron. Um, and I've, I've bought multiple dragons from Ron and have two dragons here now that are from Ron. Uh, one being this young lady right here. And another dragon, which is actually one of my favorites and part of my green project, uh, his name's King Bowser, and he's a hypotrans genetic stripe dunner. Um, I'll show him to you in another video. But yeah, this pretty lady right here is a hypo, is a, uh, I'm sorry, this lady right here is a het hypo. 100% head trans, 100% head whitblit. All right, so just want to take a moment to uh, address the last video and let you guys know what happened to the three eggs that got away, seeing that I had a clutch of 24 and only hatched out 21 dragons. All right, so first, I didn't have 24 eggs. I only had 22. How did I figure that out? Well, I looked at a, a picture that I took of the eggs when I placed them in the incubator and also looked at the picture of me taking them out of out of the incubator during the video because I often do screen captures when uh, making the videos and counted the eggs. And sure enough, there were 22 eggs. Um, and in the video, there were 21 eggs because I actually had thrown away one of the eggs because it actually died a few days before the eggs began to hatch. Okay. Um, so that answers that question, which brings me to another point, something that I actually realized while shooting this video that you all are uh, watching or just watched. Okay. And that is that I wrote on the clutch container that the cross was a hypogenetic stripe head with head trans to a hypo head trans. I mean, head with possible head trans, uh, both citruses. And in reality, the mom wasn't hypo. She was het hypo and was sold to me as a het hypo. Okay. So saying all that to say, number one, that 
it's it's very if you're going to be a bearded dragon breeder or a reptile breeder of any kind, or if you're doing anything really, but you know, let's let's keep it specific to what I do, right? Breeding uh, reptiles and bearded dragons, uh, even more specifically, um, it's very important that you keep a record of all of your pairings, all of your clutches, and all of the animals you hatch, and keep a you know keep a record of of when you lock things up, uh, when you got a lock. When you had a dragon lay, when those eggs hatched, how many eggs were laid, and how many eggs hatched. It's essential to keep a record of that. And I do keep a paper record of that. I had actually, like a few years ago, I just used to keep everything um, in my iPad. And then one day, my iPad broke. Right. So since then, I decided, you know, it's definitely better for me to keep a physical record as well as keeping a uh, record in my phone. And I keep one in my uh, iPad. Um but I, I have a notebook that I primarily use and I write everything down as far as locks, um, clutches laid. I don't really, I don't really write down the locks the way I want to. Um, but I do make sure that I always record when a clutch was laid, what the pairing was, um, how many eggs were laid. And of course, when they hatch and how many eggs hatch. Okay. So that's something that you definitely want to keep record of because the reality of it is no matter how good you might be at your job, no matter how passionate you may be about your job, we're humans and we all make mistakes. And the best thing you can do in this hobby is when you make a mistake, own it and do whatever it is you can to correct it. Okay. So the good thing about this is I found out before I posted anything for sale. So no one was missold an animal, um, which could, you know, could really mess up someone else's breeding plans. Um, and it also affects pricing, etc., so forth and so on. Um, so the good thing about it is I caught it early and I caught it with you guys. And that's one of the things that I've really liked about doing this YouTube channel so far is that it is it has allowed me to just get an extra dimension into what I'm doing. And it makes it that much more enjoyable because it's like some things I learn all over again. Like I have been surprised at how much I actually know and how much I've actually researched and how much time I've actually put in to 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 be where I am now. And you know, sharing with you guys and doing videos for you guys and explaining everything to you guys has really allowed me to uh reinvest into my passion and also uh re what's the word uh take inventory i guess of how of how much i really love what i do and i just want to say thank you all again for all of the support thank you guys for helping me grow this channel and continue to help me grow this channel um like i said our mission this year is to go from the basement to a building okay um that is the goal guys so uh every like every share every subscription helps Every purchase from the online store, you guys have been buying Rapeshi, messages me on Instagram and Facebook telling me how much a dragon loves it. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, end this long um, uh, personal segment here. We're just saying peace, love, begonas, guys. Be easy. But whatever the case, this is the mother of the uh, Whitblick clutch that we just hatched out and posted in the video recently. So to clarify, as you can see, her black nails... She is a het hypo, het trans, het whiplet, aka a triple het. And when she was sold to me, she was actually just sold to me as a het hypo, het whiplet. So she was sold to me as a double het citrus. I grabbed her immediately one because, like I said, I love Ron's production. But number two, um, I work really heavily with whiplets, specifically yellow whiplets, and also working to produce some really red whiplets. That's a, a goal of the near future, okay? But yep, so here goes these two ladies. Like I said, hoping to get some eggs from her soon, which will be, uh, if all goes as planned from Logo, and there'll be hypo trans dunners that are 100% head whip blit. Citrus as well, to continue my uh, citrus whip blit line. And like I said, this is the mother of the whip blit clutch that just recently hatched. All right, now let's see how they respond as my last two uh, dragons that I'll feed the uh, preserved grasshoppers to. Let's see how they respond. All right, let's see if she'll take it. You want that? She's like, what the heck is that? Well, I'll find out. Is it good? All right, let's get you another one then. And like I said, uh, you know, before you start hand feeding your dragons, you of course don't want to hand feed any really food aggressive dragons. And you want to work with your dragons.
to make sure they don't take off your fingers. I mean, I, I doubt that they would be able to bite off your fingers, but you don't want a dragon biting your fingers, period. Yeah, they really like these preserved grasshoppers, guys. Definitely gonna be putting this in the online store. They're really affordable and uh, really convenient. Easy to store. Uh, and they have a, 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 a shelf life of 18 months. And you can refrigerate them once you open them. So, you know, I like stuff like that. Makes an awesome treat. Let's see if she'll take some. Hey, babe, babe. Hey. Hey, you want some? She is not even bothering. Come, come, come over here. You feeling that or no? They're good. They're good. I know you're taking, huh? <laughs> yeah, but she's like, no, I'm not having it, buddy. I don't know what those are. You want it? No? All right. Well, she does. All right, so there you have it, folks. That about wraps it up for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification button so you can catch all of the latest videos that I got coming. I got a lot of good content coming for you guys, as you can see. I'm trying to become more and more consistent with it for you all. Can't thank you enough for all the support you guys have been showing me and helping me grow the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel further, feel free to visit our online store. Link in the description. Ruthless with the plug. Or... You can also visit our affiliate links, which are also in the description. All the affiliate links do help support the channel, and we definitely appreciate it. We're trying to go from the basement to a building this year, and we couldn't help, we couldn't thank you enough for all your help, guys. So, in the meantime, in between time, peace. Love, Pagonis.